10 memories that make me laugh and 10 memories that make me sad. Uh, my best friend Harvey was a national TV star. He grew up in foster care. He died young. I went one time to Los Angeles with him and he was asking people directions of the street he was standing on. And it was just funny. Uh, one time he saw this beautiful Asian woman in her 20s and she couldn't speak English. And Harvey and I was walking around Los Angeles and uh, we used to start asking like sexual things and uh, she didn't know what he was talking about. Another time I was an ambulance driver, I was the background actor in Hollywood and Steve Martin is a famous comedian. And I remember he walked past me, I think it was both fingers, that's what uh, the movie. And uh, I remember asking him, Steve, you need a stand in, I could be your man. And that's the stand in person. I did it for uh, Dorothy Dangerous with Halle Berry. And that was the piano player. He, he he left and then used me like for the camera angle and everything. And Halle Berry sat next to me. I remember joking with other EMT, uh, not EMT, background actors, that her butt touched my butt, you know, sitting on the piano stool together. And it was a laugh. And then, uh, anyway, uh, I was homeless in New York when I was 18. And I was covering the house. And uh, this famous comedian, well, he was some super famous. He should have been way bigger. His name was Charlie Burnett. And he was so funny, man. He did a couple of like, minor movies, some Amory Vice. And, uh, and uh, he mentored Dave Chappelle. But he, I remember one time I was sitting there and I watched him get start the show. He's walking on the pond with water. He said, damn, how did Jesus do this? <laughs> he, was just, he was just funny, man. New Year's Eve when Natasha and I, my ex-girlfriend, were in love and we first met. We watched the famous Times Square ball drop on TV. And uh, we was being intimate during that time. And then when he's going, 10, 9, 8, 7, so forth. The ball did drop. <laughs> anyway, uh, oh, but your attention, people can see your heart. Anyway, I uh, drove an ambulance hot. Uh, that means you put the sirens on like at least 10 times when I first started. And that was cool. I felt like a kid driving the ambulance and maybe cars moving out the way. And, but the thing was so weird though, the people in the back, they had to get there quick. So I had to be serious. And if you cause the accident, it's on you. You gotta use caution to do that. Uh, I wrote down, can't know it 100% unless you experience. Just a thought. Uh, anyway, I uh, took a patient back in the ambulance at uh, he was talking, we was in the heyday of COVID and uh, not that it went away. And he was saying, um, he was just talking. He said, listen, uh, if I put two heavy sweatpants on right now, okay, and I farted, you would smell it. And I looked at him like, uh, I guess, but why are you telling me that? He said, well, what do you think a little blue mask is going to do? Anyway, anyway, so that's the comedy stuff I wrote. This is the sad part about my life. And, uh, you know, I try to make people laugh, like the mask, comedy, and drama. So, uh... Uh, I was in New York one time and uh, I was walking and I forgot what happened. This is a homeless Spanish woman at the L stop, not underneath the train, by the, a, the train, by the L's. And he had, she had a little girl sitting there and she looked her head down like homeless can help me. And the girl's playing and on the wall and like she was in the playground. And I just looked at it and it broke my heart and I just sat there and looked. And people walked by with like business suits and all kind of religious paraphernalia and then they didn't do nothing and it's just like it just i don't know another time i'm this driver i went to the chop the children hospital of pennsylvania by the university of penn and um i never forget one of the saddest moments being an ambulance driver and i remember we dropped some kid off there for some reason you know it's just for kids with medical problems and we coming out and it was just like this little white girl with bald head and she had a big smile she waved at me and I remember, I waved back, and I remember going to the elevator. Even now, I think about it, it kind of chokes me up. And tears started rolling down my face. And then uh, uh, my partner looked at me, I was like, just so you know. And then we got back to the ambulance, I just started bawling and bawling. And he was like, I guess people call it post-traumatic stress. And um, you know, any stressful job, cop, fireman, war, whatever. And so he said, what happened, what's wrong? And he said, I saw that little girl, and I said, she's gonna die soon. And all these assholes get to live so long, and it just bothered me. Anyway. As a taxi driver, I hit three people on bikes. I did go in between the cars, and none of them was my fault. So I was just interested. Um, when I was doing a background act, I lived with Harvey for a while. I didn't have a fall out over this female named Joanna. It was wild. I got her phone number. I was hanging out with Harvey in the African American bookstore. And that, uh, she's white, blonde. She had a kid by a black guy. She went to prison for killing her ex boyfriend in self defense for nine months. And then she, and she, she fought in the Gulf War. So she's definitely tripped. But what happened was, uh, uh, I was talking on the phone and then Harvey tricked me. He said, go to the store for a second. It's the CVS next to us. And he was like in a nice area, Los Angeles, North Hollywood. And then he started 69 the number and the girl came on and I was surprised. But we didn't hit it off and Harvey ended up sleeping with her. And that's one of the reasons I moved out. And I went to stay in the Skiba Hotel and I paid to stay there. And oh my God, trippy experiences happened there. Oh my, I, I, uh, but anyway, uh, I thought I did bring it up. Um, 
So I, I was in the restaurant in the Skid Row area. It was breakfast, you get cheap breakfast. And just me and the Asian guy behind the counter. And I remember two black guys walk in and one put a gun to the Asian guy's head. And I told the guy, I didn't see nothing. I'm scared to walk out. He said, sit down. So I was just like, oh God, I heard a gunshot. I'm just gonna close my eyes. But um, uh, moving on, I wrote down a lot of stuff for what, briefly. Uh, my partner now is named Mo, short for Muhammad. And I remember one time he was coming back to base and there was a motorcycle accident. The guy, he was all, um, so we left him up on the stretcher and we took care of him. He was bleeding from the side. I think one of his lungs were punctured. Anyway, just took your experience. When I was in Job Corps, I lived a wild life, but just for my amusement. Uh, I remember uh, somebody said, you could hide drinking cough syrup over Tulsa. So we went to the infirmary like we had cold, we didn't care. And I remember drinking half the bottle. That's the worst high I ever had. It felt like fear and loathing in Las Vegas with Johnny Depp. I was totally out and, and I never did it again. And, uh, Oh yeah, I've mentioned this to my mom about voodoo one time. I don't know anything about voodoo. I just know I'm a student in life. And I look at, study a lot of things, have a very open mind. And uh, it's just like, she freaked out. Like, don't talk about that. And I was like, mom, this could be in every religion. Do you ever read the Bible? You just do it because it's for socialness, because you're lonely, I think. And this is my personal opinion. And I say, mom, this guy in Old Testament commanded people that slave, slave, slavery was not wrong, nowhere in the Bible. Uh, they ravish women, you, you know, they kill people left and right. Moses said, Thou should not kill one of the commandments. And he told his soldiers, whatever he said, he found out, he said, Why don't you go back and kill the women? And, uh, and that's in the Bible. And slavery, the man can sell his daughter in slavery, all that stuff. And they said nothing against slavery and or rape in the Bible. But uh, it just sounds like you got to find your own way, peace and happiness in life. That's not for me. So I said, voodoo means good and bad. And uh, when people were first enslaved, you brought them over here to this country, and they said the religion was bad, the French. That's what it means, voodoo. Because they're not going to accept the old, they're going to accept what we tell you. And um, anyway, so anyway, and last thing but least, uh, as an ambulance driver, we just took a young black lady, she had lupus. She in her early 20s, and she had the first only case I ever saw, monkey pox. It just like scabs on the arms. We had to wear protective gear and all that stuff. And it kind of reminded me when I was in boarding school, I got chicken pox late in life, like 15 and 16 at 105 temperature. And uh, I got over it, but it's just like, wow, that's what it reminded me of. Anyway, that's it.